I represent Skeena Bulkley Valley, northwestern British Columbia. It's a, it's a third of the province, my riding, in the northwest, up against Alaska and the Yukon border, all the way to Haida Gwaii, all the way to the interior in Fort St. James, down south to Bella Kula and Bella Bella. It's a little over 330,000 square kilometers. It's a bit bigger than Poland for those cartographers in the crowd. Yep. And I get to see all sorts of incredible things. I get to bear witness to some amazing uh, forms of government, particularly indigenous forms, that a lot of Canadians don't have contact with. A number of years ago, I was at a friend's um, feast for her kid. Her kid was getting a name. She's Heisla, which is a community in the Kitimat Valley. And there was a number of people receiving names, and her daughter was one of them. And it's a long process. The feasting is, I think that one was probably 12 or 14 hours. You, got, you get comfortable. And lots of stories get told, and a lot of old stories. And at one point, one of the elders, the, elders from, the elder from her house, very senior fellow, came up to the front in the big gym, and he started talking in Heisla. My Heisla's not very good, but he was, he was telling a story, and it went on for a bit. And as he was talking, uh, people started coming up out of the stands and from the crowd and just stood behind him quietly, just standing there. And by the time he was done, there must have been near 100 people standing behind him, just not saying anything. And I was sitting with my friend, and I said, I don't, I don't know, know this practice. Like, I don't know this tradition. What is this? Oh, and she said, oh, this is one of our oldest things. Uh, he's the head of our house. And what everybody standing there is doing is showing physically that the words he speaks... He speaks on behalf of all of them. The promises he makes are promises that they have also made. Because this is our parliament, and this is our places where we declare war and where we declare peace. This is where our business is conducted. And that's what he's showing right now, and that's what his house is standing behind him saying. And my first thought was, well, my first thought was, wow, that's remarkable. My second thought was, imagine if we in parliament, every time we stood up, had in our minds, at least, all the people behind us standing there quietly, and we were literally speaking on their behalf. How would we talk in Parliament? Question period would look different. Because the people I represent don't talk the way we talk in question period. When we're debating issues, the people I represent don't read from some prepared text that somebody else set for them without their original thought in their head. The people I represent generally speak from the heart and from their experience. And there's, there's a lot of reforms we need to make in our democracy. This is a big one, but it's not the only one. Well, a small one. It might not sound important, but it's important to me as a parliamentarian. In, in the old days, in the British House of Commons, there was a rule about paper. You couldn't have it. You couldn't speak from it. You couldn't speak from prepared text. And if an MP did, the other MPs in the House would yell out, Paper! Paper! Until the person put it down. You could only refer to quotes and stats. I'd like to bring that back. I want to hear what people have to say. And if they don't have anything to say, then don't talk. Let somebody else talk. Or maybe no one talks. It'd be a remarkable moment. And I also think we need to change the way our political parties work. They need to become more transparent with the, all the information they collect. We collect about you, which is a lot. And we're not subject to the Privacy Act. So you don't know, and no one knows. And I think we need to diminish, actually, the leader's power in each of the parties. Leaders have far too much power these days. And they control a lot of what goes on, even if they're nice people. I, I, I want the connection between voters and those that represent them to be stronger, not to be relying on their connection to the leader and whatever they happen to want. Let's crack into this.